Welcome back to the Sandbox. Thank you so much for coming back to play with me one more time here with Connor, our main character, and Matt, his best friend, his hot best friend, here in college, freshman year, just got here. And, uh, you know, met all the guys in the, in the dorm. Everyone's gay, except for one guy. <laughs> so it's a little bit like a dream. But, um, yeah, lots of gay dudes to choose from. And, uh, frankly, it seems like the staff might also be largely gay. So, you know, there is that. Lots of choices. Lots and lots of choices. But the party is over now. And uh, Matt is walking us back to our dorm room, I guess. You know, Dorm Wild really does have the best name. And I heard it really lived up to its name last year. Oh? Huh. <laughs> don't act so shy. What? Dude, I am I am not acting. Totally not acting. Yeah, downstairs you were flirting and witty and charming everyone. You didn't seem even a little bit nervous. Well, I, I guess I'm just really good at hiding it, huh? Yeah, you must be. But you were the same in high school. I mean, I'm pretty sure every girl and probably a lot of the guys wanted to date you, not just Lacey. Wait, really? Oh, yeah. You were absolutely the cute, popular boy. I was just the gawky, weird-looking kid in the Hawaiian shirt acting like your sidekick, even though I was a great older. All right, dude, if you say so. You're going to blow everyone from school's mind next time they see you, your new look is definitely an upgrade. Oh, well, thanks for calling me ugly while I was in high school. I didn't mean it like that, dude. Hey, you know, speaking of the new Matt, you were definitely lying about the apps. Those bad guys absolutely recognized you. Well, I mean, you're going to the gym with muscle studs. You live with a muscle stud who seems very familiar with you, and you also seemed really interested in Marco's modeling offer. You've been busy, sir, and I want to know what you have been up to. Well, I know you already promised some of the other guys you'd hang out tomorrow, but, uh, you know, maybe you could find some time to come by the apartment. We could do some more, uh, you know, catching up, in quotation, air fingers. Uh, definitely. I'll text you when I'm free. Maybe I'll text you when I'm, if I'm free. Hmm. Uh, yeah, let's, let's overcommit. Why not? Hey there, guys. Mind if I slip through the middle? Oh, sorry. I, I didn't mean to block the door. You're good. And don't forget to hit me up for some modeling, Matt. Your body has a lot of interesting angles. I'd be totally down to paint you. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Listen, dude. Are you going to be okay in a room alone with that guy? Well, I mean, I am a little nervous about sharing a room with someone that I don't know. But eh, I think I can handle Marco. But No, it's not like that. He seems like he wants to... Uh, well, listen, just don't do anything with him that you don't want to do. That's all I'm saying. Dude, I won't. I promise. Wait, are you jealous of Marco? No, dude, I am just looking out for my best friend. You're like fresh meat on the market, and there's a lot of guys who want to devour you right now. I just don't want you to feel pressured by anyone. Okay, dude, I appreciate that. I promise that I will only be a throat goat for the guys that I really like. Oh, <laughs> I did say that, didn't I? Yeah, you sure did. Hate to interrupt, but I need to slip back through. Boom chicka wah wah. Oh, he's just basically like naked right in front of us cool no big deal <laughs> not at all uh i think your towel might be slipping off there a little 
Ah, thanks. I didn't notice. Yo, Connor, you should hit the showers before the others get back. You know, skip the lines. Seems like you got a little dirty today. What does he mean by that? Uh, yeah, sure, that's that's a good idea. Uh, where are the showers, by the way? Just at the end of the hall. See you there. Well, he's not shy, is he? Nope, he sure isn't, and you are jealous, my friend. Eh, I should probably head back home. Hey, dude, thanks for hanging with me tonight. Yeah, anytime. And don't forget what I said. Yeah, yeah, I will keep a stick ready to beat off all the ravenous boys who are hungry for me. Okay, I need to find my bathrobe. Hmm, smells a little musky in here. Oh no, my underwear slash cum rag. Marco absolutely, definitely smelled it. That's what he meant by me being dirty. Oh. oh, well. I mean, we're both guys, right? He gets it. I just I just need to play it cool. All right, finally, here's my robe. Time to go get naked in public, I guess. So, this is how it's going to be from now on, huh? Showering in the open, next to hot college guys, every single day. No matter how much I hide it, I am nervous. But I think I could get used to this. I hear a shower running, but just one. Marco was right that no one would be here. Okay, just uh, I gotta get my soap out of my bag and uh, grab a stall. This is it's just a normal shower. Nothing to be weird about. I took public showers at the pool and, and after PE class. This is no different. Everyone has a private stall. Just... just be chill, Connor. Oh, his shower went silent at the same time as mine. Of course. Okay, I just need to towel off fast. Except, I forgot a towel. I forgot a towel! Oh my god! Oh, nice and refreshed. Feels good, right? Are you, are you hiding in there? I didn't think you'd be shy. Okay, well, I can I can just put my robe on without drying off, right? I mean, that won't be too weird. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm good. Yo, you're dripping wet. Are you just going to lie in bed like that? I mean, no judgment, but it just seems like it would be uncomfortable. Ah, uh, I Okay, dude, you caught me. I f completely forgot a towel. <laughs> Here, borrow mine. It's a little damp, but it's better than nothing. Uh, I... No, it's all good. I don't mind sharing. Here. Hey, nice man. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks, I guess. Good jeans. Oh, you seem so vulnerable, all wet and naked. Totally different from earlier. I'm just, I, I, I'm not used to being naked around other guys. You never showered in gym? I, I did. You know, but all those stalls were totally enclosed, so I never saw anything. And, and none of the guys were as hot as... As hot as all the guys here, no one in particular, you, you know you are. Mm. Uh, keep all the options open. All the options. Oh, you like variety. I feel you. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for your towel. I'm all, I'm all dry now. Uh, here's your towel. Thanks. Any time, my man. I like to share. He does seem like the type of guy who likes to share. Like sharing guys he's with at the same time that he's having fun with them. Okay, 
do not make a joke about group sex right now. Do not make a joke about big, sweaty, gay orgies. Why does my brain do this? Well, I don't know about you, but I am pretty worn out. Do you mind lights out? Oh, no, I totally don't mind. I have to get up early. Same. Are you excited? Oh, f he knows I'm horny. Oh, wait, no. He probably meant excited about the first day of classes, right? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm either excited for tomorrow or terrified. <laughs> the feeling is the exact same, right? <laughs> I feel you. Oh, nice. You're also a boxer briefs man. Yes, I am. His eyes are lingering on my bulge. I still have a... Well, night... Hope you don't snore or anything. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I don't, but you just let me know if I do. Oh, I definitely will. Hey, Connor. Hey, are you waking up? Huh? Yo, Connor, rise and shine. <sighs> Why you shake me? Go away. Are you sure? I'm just trying to make sure you aren't late. What? Ah! Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, f I forgot to set an alarm. Hey, man, it's all good. You have time. Just breathe, bud. Breathe, yes. Okay, I can do that. Breathe in, breathe out. There you go. Oh, dude, thanks for waking me up. I never forget my alarm. I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, well, you were a bit distracted last night. It happens. Oh, dude, thanks again, for real. I so totally owe you. No sweat. You still may have time to fit in a shower before class if you hurry. The showers might be busy, though. I just took a shower last... Oh. Oh, no. I almost forgot that I am coated with dried... And Marco can smell it all over me. Oh, my God. This is so embarrassing. Yeah, showers. Cool. Uh, I need to find my clothes first. Yeah, you'll probably need those. All right, I'm off. Have fun today, my man. Yeah, yeah, you too. Oh, he is not just hot, but he's thoughtful too. I am so lucky that I roomed with him. Oh, I'm still half asleep, but also more wide awake than I have ever been. I hate waking up late. F Thank God for Marco. Looking out for me was really nice of him. I really don't want to risk being late for Tomas's class after I told him that I wouldn't be, but I also don't want to walk around all day smelling gross. I think I'll take a shower, option A, or go straight to class, option B. Um, well, you don't want to be late, right? Our priority here is on our education. We need to go to class. No one's going to get close enough to smell me, right? I need to stop being so paranoid. Mm. Oh, I just got a text. Hey, it's your first day. Let me know how class goes. Okay, I will. I'm, I'm on my way now. Oh, and Leo said to say hello. And he said some other stuff, but I'm not repeating it. Well, okay, tell him hey. And tell him I said unmentionable things back, or leave it at that. Yeah, keep keep the option open. Okay, I did. Liar. 
Oh, hey, good morning. Hey, Riley. Look, I can't really talk. I gotta get downstairs. I'm late as fuck. Oh, of course. I'm going down too. We can ride together. Uh, sure. Okay. Sorry. Look, dude, I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling a little crazy. I woke up late. Oh, uh, do you need an alarm? I can ask if we can get you one. No, I have my phone. I just, I forgot to set it. Ouch. You know, I set my alarms to recur every day. I actually have it go off every five minutes with increasingly more annoying noises. And I also set it across the room so that I'm forced to get out of bed to turn it off. I'm kind of a deep sleeper. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's great. Is this elevator always this slow? Well, it can be. You're really anxious right now, aren't you? Uh, can I help? At Riley, you absolutely can help my anxiety. Just get on your knees. I, I don't think there's really anything that you can do right now. I, I You know, I just want to make a good impression on my professors, you know. Oh, you totally will. But I get why you'd be nervous. It's a big day. Okay, just calm down, Connor. Deep breath. Ah, oh, thanks, Riley. You really are helpful, you know that? Well, it's what I'm here for. Man, his smile really is adorable. I mean, just being around him makes me feel a little calmer. Our ride is here. Huh. It, it smells a little musty in here. I'll have to let maintenance know. Oh, that, that might be me, Riley. <phone rings> okay, this is you. Try not to stress. You'll be fine. Thanks, dude. See you later. Oh my god, there are people everywhere. And they all seem to know exactly what they're doing. Man, I am having flashbacks of going to school for the first time as a kid. Why do I all of a sudden feel like I need an adult to hold my hand? At least everyone's been nice and encouraging so far. I kind of like this painting, dude. That's, that's kind of nice. I like it. Oh, excuse me. Someone bumped into me. It's another student, and he's kind of cute. And he seems to be about my age. Evan, the confused classmate. Wow, he's cute. He seems a little nervous. Well, uh, both of those are true, but uh, let's go with he's cute. Oh, those puppy dog eyes are getting to me. So is his stocky little body. Stocky? He's not stocky. Dude, come on. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was in the way. I, I, I apologize. Uh, do you know if this is where I'm supposed to be? Uh, I have no idea. Where are you trying to get to? My first class. I'm completely lost. I'm still at 21CA, right? Uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Unless the elevator is like Willy Wonka and can fly to other places. Elevators can do that? Uh, no. Uh, elevators cannot do that. I'm just joking. It can only do that in the movies. Was I supposed to watch a movie? Is, th is that on the syllabus? Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. I thought I was nervous. This poor guy. Uh, where are you trying to get to? Uh, Tomas Espina's class, I think. I lost my schedule, and I couldn't find it in my school email account. Also, I lost the password to my school email account, so now I can't try looking again. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm in Tomas' class, too, and I'm pretty sure it's just over there. I can walk with you if you want. Oh, yes, please. Man, thank you. I think I'm realizing my mom was a helicopter parent. I keep wanting to call her and ask for help. <laughs> yeah, well, I was hoping for an adult, too. Um, I can be yours if you'll be mine. Deal. I'm Evan, by the way. Connor, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Oh, 
Um, should we go? I don't know what time I'm supposed to be there. It's either 9 or 11. Maybe it was 10. Okay, let's let's go find out. Whew. Okay, well, we are the first ones here. I really didn't need to worry after all. And there's Tomas getting his notes together. I should say hello so he knows that I made it on time, like I promised. Man, I am such a brown noser. Hey, Tomas. Looks like I'm a little early. Hmm? Ah, Connor. Yes. And you are? Me? You are the only other person here. Uh, I don't actually know if I'm supposed to be here. Uh, this is Evan. He thinks he's in your 9 a.m. class, too, so we came to find out. How do you not know for sure? You don't have your schedule? I don't know. I'm so sorry. Should I go? I can go. No, no. We have some time to figure it out. Connor, thank you for helping him this far. It was very kind of you. Oh, sh sure. No problem. Um, by the way, your cologne smells fantastic. It's a good scent for you. Cologne? Uh, th thanks. Do you mean my dried... This way, Evan. He seems impressed with me. <laughs> I made a good impression, and class hasn't even started yet. Man, this is no sweat. I have got this. Uh, who am I, and why should you listen to me? My name is Tomas Espina. I've written dozens of plays. A few of them were actually good. My class, a three-act structure. We start with the basics and implement what we learn by writing a new scene each week. We dig deep and come up with a larger story to tell, then break down the beats with each other we put our sweat and tears onto the page and then put our work out in the world to be torn to shreds also known as being critiqued playwriting is an oral art it's not an art of a writer in expecting to be read but a writer expecting to be heard arthur miller this is kind of cool to have a customized uh element like this in the uh in the slide deck here. Uh, I'm not wearing any cologne, though. That was kind of weird. Unless... Oh, um... Well, I guess maybe not taking a shower has paid off. Okay, other people are coming in. I should probably claim a seat. This is a lot more info than I expected on day one. I have to write a full scene for a play every week? And read it out loud to all these strangers? Oh my god. Ah, that is our time. Thank you for bearing with me, everyone. I became a writer so I wouldn't have to do public speaking. That is what actors are for. <laughs> that got a chuckle out of everyone. It's good to know even the professors get nervous. Well, I officially survived my first college class. I didn't realize how small and intimate these classes were, though. I kind of liked it. Okay, I should check in with Tomas, head to my next class. Check in. Okay, I'm already a huge brown noser. I don't think I need to check in with Tomas anymore. It's, I don't want to be late to my next class. Okay, Will's class is next. Hey, Connor. Oh, hey, Evan. Uh, did you figure out your classes? Yeah, finally. Thank you for holding my hand. Yeah, don't sweat it, dude. Did you take notes? Yeah. Did you not? Uh, I, I forgot a pen, and I couldn't type it into my phone fast enough. Tomas talks kind of fast. Okay, I can email you mine. What's your email address? I I still can't get into my school email account. Oh my god. 
<laughs> Poor Evan. He's, he's just so lost. Uh, okay, what is your normal non-school email? Um, I kind of forgot my password to that too. Wow, okay. Uh, well, here, I have a spare pen. Do you want to write down some of my notes real quick? Okay. Oh, you typed on a laptop. Oh, that is so smart. I should get one too. Evan is still writing away. I mean, I know Will said that he was lax, but I still don't want to be late. Hey, Evan, uh, how's it going? Uh, I have the first paragraph down. Is he copying everything verbatim? I really need to go. I should uh, let him figure it out on his own. Offer to help more later. Okay, well, A, he's cute. B, he's like a lost puppy dog. Uh, how can I turn him away? I can't, I can't. I can't be mean to him. Okay, I'll offer to help more later. Uh, okay, how about we just do the email thing, okay? I can help you find someone to get into your email account. Wow, really? Uh, are you sure? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel kind of responsible for your well-being now. But just for this morning, okay? I'm kind of still figuring things out for myself. Oh, yeah, definitely just this morning. Oh, you are a superhero, Connor. Well, he seems to be really appreciative, at least. It does feel good to be helpful, especially after feeling like a mess earlier. And it doesn't hurt that helping Evan out means that I get to look at him more. I mean, he is super cute when he's frazzled. Um, one last thing, if that's okay. Do you know where Will Halbert's class is? Uh... I think it should just be up here a little ways. I'm actually heading there, too. Oh, nice. Cool. Can I walk with you? Sure. Why not? Wow. This room is totally different from Tomas's. Yeah, for real. There's an entire tree in the corner. Gosh, I have no idea where to sit. Do you... Uh, I'm sorry I'm so needy. I don't even know you. Okay, Evan, look. I'll be honest. An hour and a half ago, I was nothing but nerves. So helping you has actually been a really good distraction for me. Oh, well, that's good. Ah, uh, I'm being distracting. Dang it. Sorry. Don't, dude, it's... I'm going to go find a seat. Thanks again for walking me around. And for the notes. Oh, and the pen. Really, dude, it's... I'll find you after class for email help. Oh, okay. No problem. Man, maybe he really does need to call his mom for help. Another small classroom. I kind of like how few of us there are in each class. It means I won't just be a face in the crowd. There's Will, but he's a little busy with some of the other students. I think I'll just find a seat. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Professor Halberd. Morning. Uh, we haven't met yet. What's your name? Me? Uh, Evan. You were a half step off on the greeting there, Evan. That's excellent. We need a little idiosyncrasy to keep us on our toes. You're welcome. Well, everyone, welcome to Fiction Writing 101. As you probably sussed out, I do things a little differently here. This class is less a lecture and more a conversation. I have ideas to share, and you are welcome to challenge them. No matter what some may say, there is no one right way to be a writer. Um, but 
what if I want to be published, like, traditionally? Don't they look for certain kinds of, like, writing? Sure, Cherish, many do. We will have many discussions together as a group, and we will certainly touch on writing for publication. No matter what you want to write, you have a place here. What we'll be discussing together first are the fundamentals, the foundations that will help you build any story that you wish to tell. My foundation will differ from yours, just as yours will differ from Connor's. Uh, why did he choose me? This is why my class is not strictly instructional. We are here to have a meeting of the minds. We all have valuable things to share to help each other lay down our own individual foundations. Uh, what if I don't have any valuable ideas? You do, Evan. Even if you don't know it now, but we'll discover them together. Very artsy-fartsy, touchy-feely teacher, isn't he? To begin with, I have a question for all of you. These plants, these trees, does having nature here calm you? Yes, no. Um, sure, I like trees. There are murmurs, as others answer, mostly yeses. Great. Now, what if I told you that this tree was artificial? That it is a sculpture crafted by an incredibly talented artist to appear real. Does that change how you feel? Uh, yes or no? Um, no, it kind of really doesn't. More murmuring of answers. Sounds like it's evenly split now. Ah, so we all reacted differently to this new knowledge. Interesting, right? This tree is a fiction, and the revelation of its artificiality altered our perspective of it in different ways. The artist who made this sculpture knows trees. She has an intimate knowledge of her subject that helped her craft something so realistic that it felt real for most of us. And so it is with fiction. Fiction is a fabrication that evokes a reality in someone's imagination, and our success in hiding that artificiality relies on how intimate we are with the feelings that we're exploring. Some readers, like some of you, lose interest once something triggers their sense that the story is false. It could be a detail about a real event that isn't factual, or an emotion that doesn't ring true. With this in mind, keeping our readers engaged is our biggest challenge. I mean, we certainly can't please everyone, nor should we try. But for the audience for which you're writing, a basis of authenticity will help sell the fantasy. I think this makes sense. I'm a little lost. No, it totally makes sense. I like that. I think I just instinctively write that way. Many of us do. Calling on our own memories can bring to the page specific descriptions that sell the story, no matter what that story may be. What if we don't want to write realistic fiction? Like, how am I going to conjure up memories about vampires or whatever? Well, what does the idea of a vampire evoke in you? Um... There's no wrong answers. I guess, like, terror and infatuation and intensity? Which are feelings that you may be familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> this is a nice segue into what we're going to explore in our writing this semester. Because if there's a recurrent theme with vampires, it's lust. Sex. Um, we're writing about sex? Um, we are. Sex and sexuality are embedded in the foundation of every story that we tell. In fact, the notion is one of the reasons this school was created. To be a space to explore sex and how it influences our art. 
Uh, sorry, me again. I feel like I'm talking too much. Cherish, there's no need to be sorry. Questions are welcome and encouraged. Yeah, for sure. Just, um, I'm ace. So, like, sex just won't be in my stories, I guess? Especially if I don't want to be artificial like you said. Asexuality is a sexual orientation, yes? Yeah. Okay, consider this. How you view men, and therefore how you write about a man, will differ for how I, a gay man who is very much not asexual, would write about a man. Without even thinking about it, I might focus on the shape of his body and how his masculinity sparks certain sensations in me. You may focus instead on how his physicality makes you feel in other ways, such as threatened or comforted. Our sexuality shapes our perception in ways that we're not even conscious of. What I'm challenging you to do is really take notice of how the way you experience your sexuality influences your storytelling. Um, but... What if you haven't had sex? Are you not allowed to write about it because it would be fake? You can absolutely write about an experience without having had it. It's in the building out from something that you have experienced that you can go from painting the broad strokes to filling in the fine details. Think about the vampire idea that Cherish had. You've never encountered a literal monster that can mesmerize you with their eyes. But if you've experienced a similar sense of helplessness or desire or both, you can use those as a stepping stone to make this very unreal situation feel authentic. We'll have plenty of time this semester to explore the idea of how sex informs our writing. If you want to write about sex from a place of intimate knowledge, remember that you're adults who are free to explore however you like here at 21CA, as long as it's consensual and safe. If that isn't something that you're seeking, that will take your writing this semester in a different direction, a direction that is uniquely you. I'm excited to see where this goes. I bet you are, Will. I I think I get all of this, but it kind of sounds like I was just given an assignment to have sex. I was not expecting this. All right, I think this is a great place to end for today. Let's ruminate on these ideas and, and come back tomorrow ready to discuss our thoughts. And remember that my door is always open if you would like to speak about this with me one-on-one, -on -one, or perhaps lose your virginity. Okay, well then, this was a lot different from Tomas's class. I'm not sure how I feel. Writing about sex and then having to share it with other people? I mean, the idea of revealing myself like that is a little scary. But also, I think I feel a little excited. Look, art is about revealing yourself. That's what art is. Whether it's writing or acting or painting or dancing or whatever, you reveal yourself to others who are watching you. That's If you're not doing that, it's not good art. People know. People know when you're faking it. So, yeah, Connor, you got to get used to the idea that if you're going to be a writer, you're going to reveal yourself to your readers. I've never really thought about how sex affects my writing. I've never had sex, and, and so I didn't think it would. But now I'm wondering if all my stories are full of horny virgin fantasies without me even realizing it. No one's bugging Will right now. I think I'll go talk to him. Hi, Will. Connor, how are you feeling? You you seem a little nervous. Uh, that's because I am. <laughs> I, I mean, you don't make me nervous, though. It's just this this uh, this assignment. Got it. Let's let's talk it through. 
it's just that I'm, uh, well, I'm, it's okay to say it, okay? It's just you and me. I'm, I'm a virgin, and uh, I'm horny all the time, and like, I think about naked guys and having sex constantly. I mean, it's probably so obvious in all of my writing, and that is embarrassing to think about. I can't believe that I just admitted all of that. You don't need to be embarrassed. That's why we're going to work on making our subconscious conscious. When you're aware that your horny man brain is taking over when you write, you can pull back or lean into it with more control and consideration. Ah, horny man brain. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably a more literary way to put that, but uh, might as well get right to the point, right? Do you want to have sex, Connor? See, I told you, Will, totally hitting on his students. Uh, is he asking me to have sex with him? Oh, he, he probably means in general. Uh, well, sh- sure. I, I really, really want to. I just, I don't know when or how to do it. I mean, everyone builds it up to be such a big deal. Well, it, it can be. I'm waiting to find someone you feel especially close to before having sex is perfectly valid. It can also be valid to dive right in just for the pleasure of it. That is up to you. Trust your instincts. Wow, uh, you're really good at making people feel comfortable, aren't you? So I'm told. I'm glad you feel that way. I'm still not actually sure how I feel about tackling this assignment. I think I'll head back to the dorm to think about it, ask if he does more intimate lessons. Um, oh boy. Oh, uh, let's head back to the dorm. I'm not, I, I don't know. A student having sex with a teacher is, I don't, there's something about it that just still feels, uh, maybe it's the way I was raised. I don't know, but it feels wrong to me. We're going to head back to the dorms. Okay, well, hey, thanks, man. I'm going to go and ponder some stuff. Thanks for a great class today. I hope your pondering goes well. See you tomorrow, Connor. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll see you then. Ah, I don't have any more classes today. I really don't know what to do with myself right now. Well, your assignment is to have sex, and what is going on over here in the corner? Uh, yeah. I think you could just probably walk over there and talk to either of these guys and uh, you're going to solve your problem right there, Connor, my friend. But unfortunately, playtime is over for right now. So you're going to have to come back next episode and see if Connor can fulfill, complete his assignment. And uh, (laughs) although, to be fair, the assignment is not to have sex. The assignment is to write about sex, right? Whether you're asexual or horny all the time or a virgin but you want to have sex or whatever right it's to sort of let sex influence the way that you write which it probably is going to do anyway but all right well anyway thanks for joining me we'll see you next time right back here in the sandbox